exciting to come away once again. On today's episode, we'll be discussing no condemnation. This is a message by our senior pastor, Adama Sergeji. You can watch the full sermon on our YouTube channel or Facebook page and the Solution Chapel International. My name, as always, is Margaret, and joining me for today's conversation are Peace and Staff from South Africa and Shingi from the UK. Welcome to the chat room, Shingi. Hi, thank you, Margaret. Nice to see you guys. Good to see you too. Welcome to the chat room, Stan. Hi. It's a pleasure to have you. Welcome, Peace. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us today. As you're all aware, we'll be talking about no condemnation. Condemnation was defined in the message as officially declaring something unfit or a person unfit for use. That's quite intense. It can also mean expression of a very strong disapproval. John 3, 17 says that God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but the world will be saved through him. It is a good reminder and it's good to know that God does not condemn us. We were made to understand that condemnation is the enemy's way of attacking the minds of believers. Because one of the biggest challenges of believers, as the pastor said, is condemnation. During pastor's presentation, he explained that the devil is after God, but because he can't get to God, he gets to God's image, which is man. That is why it's, it's not surprising that we go through constant attacks by the enemy. There is a lot of attack on man. We see that around us daily. And even in our personal lives, we see so many attacks. We go through so many attacks. So I think it's important for us to know or have strategies that will help us leave about these attacks. So the first point of discussion is this. How can we constantly leave about these attacks and reflect the full image of God. And I will start with you, Shindy. Hi, thank you so much, Margaret. As you've already mentioned, that Pastor Sekeji during the sermon quoted Genesis 1 verse 26, which says that we are made in the full image of God. But what it is, is the devil already knows that he has, uh, God has defeated him. And then he knows the only way he can separate us from God is to attack his image. And we are the image of God. So I like the example Pastor Sekeji gave that um, when Saddam Hussein was toppled, um, you know, the people couldn't get to Saddam Hussein. So they were trampling over his statues. They were trampling over his image. And in our day-to-day -day lives, maybe similar things happen where if people are trying to hurt you, but they can't hurt you directly, maybe they will spread rumors about you. They will say things about you. They won't attack you directly to your face. But what that does is it tarnishes, your, it tarnishes your image. It tarnishes your relationships with other people who then have a viewed or skewed view of your image as well. So I think it's really important that we are aware of the tactics that are used by the enemy, that he wants to sabotage our salvation. He wants to get in between our relationship with God. So the most important thing I would advise is just to know who you are in God. When we were having our home cell, one of the things we were talking about, we were talking about trusting in God. And with condemnation, um, the Bible says that God comes to convict us. He doesn't come to condemn us. So if you're feeling condemned, then that voice is not from God. It is from the enemy. So just yes. always see whatever you're feeling or whatever you're being told, judge it by its fruit. If the fruit doesn't edify you, if it doesn't convict you, if it doesn't build you up, and then it's not from God. That is not, that is condemnation. And all condemnation there is there to do is just to judge you, is to destroy you and to get in between your relationship with God. One of the statements that really goes around and I've seen it, uh, lots of men and women of God have used it. And I think Margaret, you quoted it on Facebook this week is that if you cannot love yourself, you cannot love others as well. And I think that applies to condemnation as well. Jesus died on the cross for us. You are forgiven. But we as Christians sometimes yeah. struggle with forgiving ourselves as well. We still feel we have to prove things through our words and we're constantly trying to be good to feel to justify that salvation. But I think it's just about accepting that God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you for what you did 10 minutes ago, one hour ago, three days ago, what you are going to do two hours from now. In the book of Lamentations, it says your mercies and his mercies are new every morning. So I would advise that anyone who's struggling with their self-image or with condemnation is that just to be aware of the lies of the enemy, first and foremost, and you don't have to do anything to earn God's salvation. 
and be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. Accept God's grace because he's already forgiven you. Thank you, Margaret. I like that, Shindy. Be kind to yourself. Know who you are. Um, the scripture says we should not be ignorant of the schemes of the devil. So to be able to live above these attacks, you need to you need to know, you need to have knowledge of how the devil works, how he deals with you as an individual, because normally he comes to our weaknesses. So if you know yourself and you know what your weaknesses are, then you'll be careful in order to know that the devil might try to attack you in these areas. And I'm sure you'll be, you, you'll be able to overcome them. Thank you so much, Shingi. What do you think, Star? Um, I like what Shingi said about how we come to be in the full image of God by knowing who we are in God and how we know who we are in God is by standing in the word, reading the word and reading what God thinks about us and all the promises that he has given us. Because if we don't, yeah, like Shingi said, if we don't know who we are, then we can't stand in our Christ identity and we'll fall at the attacks of the enemy. So reading the word and it was also with reading the word, we are able to fight against the enemy and we are able to stand against his attacks. Because I remember, I think in Matthew chapter four, when Jesus was in the desert, the enemy kept tempting him with things and attacking him with things, but Jesus kept retaliating with the word. And it's very, very important that we do stand in the word. Amazing. Thank you so much, Star. I like that. We should fight with the word. You have to run with the message, actually. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we can't fight these attacks without the word. Thank you so much. What do you think, Peace? How can we live about these attacks and reflect the full image of God? course um the first thing we have to understand is the love of god now the book of romans romans chapter 8 it emphasizes on the love of god and what it can do for us as his children so remember that it's not by works that we are saved but it is by the grace of god right mm -hmm. so remember that his love is also unconditional that's god's love uh, Romans 8 also speaks of how we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not just conquerors, but we're more than conquerors, right? So it is all by the love of God that we can conquer all these things. So, yeah, I can also agree with, um, you know, just staying in the word, knowing what God has to say about you, right? Because most of the time we always tell ourselves that we're not good enough that we don't deserve the love of God simply because of what we did uh, maybe yesterday. Uh, but really, God thinks differently of us. He loves us. That's, that's just who he is. It is his nature. God is love. He could never hate us, right? And so we have to remember his love, ultimately. It is his love that, that helps us to conquer any situation, any attack that comes against us. It is the love of God that helps us to conquer. And so we have to rest on that, rest on the fact that God loves us, know that God loves us, right? And also um, the blood of Jesus, right? I love the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, Romans 12, the whole chapter actually, there was a war in heaven where the angels were fighting against evil. And in Romans 12, verse 11, it speaks of how they conquered through the blood of Jesus, right? And so it is the blood of Jesus that helps us to conquer all types of evil. Every single time that I pray, I normally like to call upon the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. It is so, so powerful. It helps us to conquer any situation. So yeah, um, knowing that God loves us and um, knowing what the blood of Jesus can do for us, you know, we need to rest, rest upon those things and then yeah, I believe we can ultimately conquer all these attacks. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Peace. Know that God loves you unconditionally. Yeah. And also the blood of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus. We overcome these attacks by the blood of the Lamb and also by the words of our testimony. So even as we plead the blood of Jesus, let's also confess positively and we'll be able to overcome these attacks of the enemy because the enemy is looking out for us on a daily basis and we can't afford to let the enemy win. We are, we are more than conquerors already, as it's already been said. So let's hold on to that and know that God is with us and that he loves us unconditionally. Thank you so much for your view. We are moving on to the next point of discussion. So senior pastor used an analogy that got me thinking about the way we approach people and situations in life. 
I actually posted it on Facebook and last night, because when I was preparing for this message, I just couldn't help it. He explained that if you throw a corn at a chicken, it may, it may run away, although the meal is the meal the chicken needs. So although your intention is to feed the chicken, if you throw the corn at the chicken, the chicken will run away. But if you serve it nicely to the chicken, it will stay and it may eat the food. And that really got me thinking about how we approach people and how we deal with people approach. The fact that our approach is very important in life. One of our greatest tests as believers is showing the love of Christ. But yet we fail big time in, in most cases. And I think it's probably because we don't understand why this is important. We don't tend to understand why it's important to show the love of Christ to people. So the next point of discussion, what I want us to discuss next is this. Why must we show the love of God to people and not condemn them? And I will start with you, peace. Yes. Um, we need to remember this. Um, the pastor did mention in Romans chapter five, verse eight, that God demonstrates his love in that when we were sinners, Christ died for us, right? And so we need to remember that God, he used this broken people in order to do his works, right? So, and I think I've mentioned this before, how historically in the Bible, God had used broken people. You think of people like David, you think of people like um, Paul, you know, he wrote a lot of books in the Bible, but he used to kill Christians, right? And so understanding that God uses broken people will ultimately give us this mindset that, you know, people may not be perfect, but God loves them nonetheless, that we ourselves, we're not perfect either, right? I was broken when God got me and now I'm okay, right? And so we need, to, we need to show God's love to people no matter where they are in life, no matter how broken they are, understanding that he also loved us when we were broken, right? And so God really wants to use these people and we have to understand that. The more we push people away, then we're really not doing the work of the kingdom, right? So we're just chasing people away and that's not what God wants us to do. And he wants to, to draw people closer to him, right? And so really the only people that can draw people closer to God, it's us. And so when we don't show love, we're just doing the complete opposite. And so we have to remember that God wants to use broken people. He does use broken people in order to do some really great works, right? And so yeah, we need to show God's love to people by just accepting them. I guess also, you know, being patient with them, no matter how sinful they are, it doesn't matter where they are. I mean, I used to be judgmental. I used to judge people a lot. And I've said this before, how God had to humble me in that, you know, I had to, I had to actually see how God transformed all these broken people. You know, he was showing this thing right in front of me. Right. He was showing me that, hey, I can take someone who's broken and use them. Here they are. And so from there, I just kind of stopped judging them. And I was like, you know what? God does want to use broken people. I was broken as well. And he's using me today. Right. And so it's our mission to really show love to people. Christ loved us being sinners. And so we have to love other people as they are broken as they are. It doesn't really matter what they're doing, but we need to show God's love to them because he can also use them as well. So yeah, that's my thing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Peace. God uses broken people. We were all broken and he found us. So we can't write anyone off. He doesn't. Jesus is our example and he loves people. So we should, we should look up to him and also love people as well. Thank you so much. What do you think, Star? Um, to add on to what Peace said, the Bible tells us not to judge other people because God is the ultimate judge. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. So, you know, we don't have a place to judge other people because we've also been there. We've done what they've done. You know, like the blind can't condemn the blind for being blind because we've all done the same things. We've all gone through the same things. So we have no place to judge other people for doing the very same thing that we did. And we can't condemn or judge others because we are meant to leave the judging and the condemning to God. All God told us to do is that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. All we need to do is to show people the love of God. 
because the love that we show others kind of reflects the love of God. So when we condemn other people, they expect condemnation from God. But when we love them, we show them how much God will love them despite their sin, despite whatever it is that they're going through. So, yeah. Amazing, that's powerful, I like that. The only God some people will ever see is the Christian next door. Mm -hmm. And so if you show them love, then they will see God through you. But if you condemn them, they will expect condemnation from God. That's mm -hmm. so powerful. Thank you so much, Star. What do you think, Shinge? Why must we show the love of God to people and not condemn them? Um, I think Star and Peace have already mentioned most. Uh, the most important thing is that, you know, God never condemned us. He loved us as we were when we were sinners. And I think sometimes as Christians, we have a very short memory. You know, we forget that we were living in sin. We were living in unrighteousness as well. You mentioned that to condemn is to declare something unfit for purpose. And God has never declared us unfit for purpose. So who are, they, who are we then to declare others unfit for God's love mm -hmm. or for his glory or to experience that? So what we do when we condemn people is that we push them away. And then we're also taking the place of God because now we're using self-righteousness. We are saying, well, I'm perfect and we're replacing God as well. So it's just, it's just, you know, all it does is repel people away from God. The other thing as well is uh, peace mentioned Paul through the book of Bible. And one of the most important thing about Paul is as he's writing, he really talks about Christian unity throughout the New Testament. Mm -hmm. An example is in uh, Thessalonians 5 verse 22, where he says, therefore encourage one another and build each other up. And he always talks about Christians communing together and that if we are struggling, we should always, you know, help each other up and we don't leave each other behind. So I think as Christians as well, it's just to get rid of that self-righteous attitude, to know that we are in this together, that, you know, we have to demonstrate the love of God and that we have to build each other up as well. Um, Peace and Star also gave the example of Jesus. If we look at Jesus's encounter throughout the New Testament, he never, ever condemned anyone who came to him, ever. I mean, we can talk about Zacchaeus. Last time on the chat room, we did a session on text collectors and sinners. Um, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery, whenever he dealt with people, all he saw was the best in them. So it's up to us to see the best in us because God saw the best in us as well. So it's just uh, to reiterate what Star and he said that, you know, our greatest commandment is love. And who are we then to think that we have, um, you know, conquered or we're still going to sin, mm -hmm. we're still going not to get things right. And God will still give us a chance every morning as well. So it's just to demonstrate, as mentioned by Peace and Star, that same love of God that he has for us to other people as well. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Shinge. We are meant to be encouraging each other, lifting each other up and not putting each other down. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been an interesting discussion. Um, I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying today's discussion. Thank you all. If you have just joined the conversation, this is the SEA chat room. And today we are talking about no condemnation. God does not condemn us. So we don't understand why you should condemn yourself or you should allow anyone to condemn you. Stay with us. I'm sure you learn a thing or two. We are moving on to the last point of discussion. During the message, Pastor made a statement that really stayed with me. I didn't, I didn't know that. So that was an eye opener for me. He said that the greatest challenge of every Christian is condemnation. I didn't really know that. And many have left the faith as a result. We, are, we all make mistakes in life. Um, no one is perfect. We are all work in progress. And at times the, the temptation to condemn ourselves can be really strong, especially when you think you have done something out of the ordinary and, and the devil is battling you um, front, center, back, you're wondering, you, you tend to condemn yourself. So if there's anyone watching us and they're living in self-condemnation, what advice would you give them? And I will start with you, Star. Okay. Um, Pastor Adamba said that we shouldn't be so harsh on ourselves. You know, we all make mistakes, but it's not our place to condemn ourselves. God will deal with us in his own way. But for us, we just need to come to God and give our hearts to him. You know, God won't look at your, as long as you come to him with your whole heart, he's not going to look at your past. He's just going to see you. He's going to see what's in your heart, not what you've done. And Pastor Adama said that God doesn't see you. He sees Christ in you. He's not going to see your past. He's not going to see what you've done, but he's going to see the potential of Christ within you. He's going to see 
what you're capable of despite your sin. Jesus already died for our sins. He already paid for our sins. So the punishment, whatever punishment and condemnation that comes with sin, Jesus already bore that on the cross. So all we need to do is just come to God and repent and give our hearts to him. You know, as Romans 8 verse 1 says, therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. As long as we're in Christ, we give our lives to Christ. We're not going to be condemned. We're just going to be met by love. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. There is no condemnation for us. As long as we remain in Christ, God does not see our past. He only sees our tomorrow and our potential, and he doesn't condemn us. So if you're living in self-condemnation, there you have it. Don't condemn yourself because God does not see. He doesn't even what you have done. The only thing is come to him, be broken before him, pour out your heart to him, ask him to forgive you, whatever it is, and move on. It's as simple as that. Don't let the enemy hold you in self-condemnation. Thank you so much, Star. What do you think, Peace? Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest issues with the church today, and it's still an issue, and um, it's probably going to continue to be an issue, but I believe we can fix it in some way. Uh, the issue is we continue to tell people that they have to be okay, that they have to be perfect before coming mm -hmm. to God, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, before, even when I got saved, I would feel like that a lot of times, right? Just going into church thinking, okay, um, am I perfect? Did I get things right? Did I do things right, right? And so, yeah, the church has always made us feel that we have to be perfect before we come to Christ. And uh, that's not how it works. When you come to Christ, Christ is the one that transforms you. It doesn't matter how broken you are. It doesn't matter what you did last night. It doesn't matter what you did Three minutes ago, when you come before Christ at that very moment, when you surrender to him, when you fully surrender to him, that's when he says, okay, I got you now. Now I'm going to fix you. Now I'm going to make you a better person, right? And so our brokenness cannot match the love of God. That's what we need to remember. The love of God is so big and so powerful. It is way above our brokenness. It doesn't matter what we did. And so really we, we have to start teaching people that they just have to come as they are. And I know uh, some people, when you say stuff like this, they think, well, you're going to make people take advantage of the grace of God. That, that's not the point. When you want someone to come before Christ, when you want someone to be saved, you have to present the grace of God before them, right? And so thereafter, God will do the work of transforming that, that person's mind, right? And so we get saved first, and then we get transformed in our minds, right? And so, yeah, we, we have to continue to tell people that God loves them as they are and that he can transform them, that they can continue to grow and progress. It's a progression thing. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. So you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the whole thing figured out instantly, but you have to come before God and allow him to do the transforming work and allow him to, to just change you. Right. And so um, the other problem with self-condemnation is it keeps one from really doing the work of Christ. Like sometimes you just want to put your foot forward and just do it. And then the devil says, uh -uh, uh -uh. remember what you, what you did here? And then you're like, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. And God says, go ahead, do it. And you keep condemning yourself. Don't condemn yourself. When God wants you to do, to do something, do it knowing that he loves you. I spoke about the love of God, right? And so remember that God loves you and because of his love, you're ultimately um, redeemed. And so when you have that in mind, you can be able to do the work of God, right? And yeah, uh, in summary, you don't have to be perfect before coming to Christ. Come as you are, broken as you are, and he's gonna make you perfect and um, rest on his love. I would also advise somebody to, to read Romans 8, just, read through Romans 8, you know, meditate on it, try and understand it. I mean, there's so many scriptures in the Bible, by the way, but, you know, Romans 8, it's really one of my favorites. I still read it even today. There are times where I do feel like maybe I did something that's way out, and then God says, go back to Romans 8. And once I read that, you know, God's love just pours out, and, um, yeah, I get healed instantly. Thank you.
Amazing. Thank you so much, Peace. We are a work in progress. There you have it. Check out Romans 8 as well. God does not condemn us. We are all on the porter's wheel, like a child learning to walk. You might fall along the way, but the important thing is that you pick yourself up and keep walking. Don't give up. Surround yourself with the right people as well, because when a child is learning to walk, there is a mother who helps the child as well. So we all work in progress. You are not the only one um, going through whatever it is or who has made mistakes. So don't condemn yourself. Mm -hmm. Come out of it and learn to walk again. Thank you so much, Peace. What do you think, Shingi? Thank you so much, Margaret. I'll keep mine very brief because I think Star and have captured the essence of it. All I'd just like to add is as well is that um, it's a daily process. So we've spoken before about renewing your mind as well. So we know that. So it's about using the word of God and reading what the Bible tells you what God thinks of you. You know, God knows the number of the number of hairs on your head. He holds you in his palm. So whenever you feel that self-condemnation, open your scriptures, use Google to um, find scriptures about love and what God thinks of you. His son died for you. So it's a constant battle because the enemy won't stop attacking you. So, you know, you might get over today, but 20 minutes later, he'll be like, okay, you had 10 chocolate sugar. You're supposed to only have one. Or the next thing else, you didn't smile at that woman. The attacks are constant. So that renewing of your mind has to be place. And just spending the presence, your time in the presence of God, just worshiping him and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you. So just never forget what God says about you. We all have moments of weakness as well, but always refer back to God and what he says about you when you have moments of doubt. And the last thing I will add as well is sometimes when we see in our automatic reaction is to run away from God. I remember when I, you know, I'm still dealing with condemnation, but whenever I felt that, oh my God, you know, this is it. I've really messed up big time. I'll even stop coming to church. I'll disappear because I would feel the weight and this condemnation over me. But that's the time when you should run to God. So God doesn't want you to run away from him, run to him. He won't judge you. He won't condemn you. Thank you, Margaret. Amazing. Thank you so much, Shingi. There you have it. Run to God. Don't run away from him. I also like the fact that you said we should renew our minds. The battlefield is in the mind. If you lose the battle in your mind, you've lost it in reality. So just make sure that your mind is renewed and you are feeding on the word. You are in the word. I was watching um, this pastor who said, it's okay to feel good about yourself when you're in the process. We are all in the process. Um, he, said, he said something about, um, we move from glory to glory. And the fact that if your glory here at this point is your low, then you know that there is a good glory coming tomorrow. But enjoy the glory because even at that low point, the scripture says we move from glory to glory. So it is still a time of glory. It might not look it to you, but um, God is God. When his word says, it's what we take. He says we move from glory to glory. So no matter where you find yourself, it is still a glory season. Enjoy that glory season. Enjoy that glory moment. Do not condemn yourself. Thank you so much, Shingi. Thank you, Star. Thank you, Peace. Thank you so much for sharing your views with me today. It's been an interesting discussion. Um, and I'm sure as a result of this, my weekend is going to be amazing. God loves us regardless. So don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn yourself and don't, let, don't give anyone the chance to condemn you. I stress on that. Don't give anyone the chance to condemn you at all. I would like to say a big thank you to our sponsor, Carrot Hair. Please check them out on their website, carrotohair.com. Thank you so much for spending time with us today and have a fabulous week. God bless you. Bye for now.